What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Video number two for today is another edition of the Never Seen It series. This is where I give you my thoughts and opinions about movies that I've never seen before in my entire life. Do I love them? Do I hate them? But most importantly, do I recommend them to you? There's always the best of the batch and there's always the worst. Everything else falls in between. Now before I get into showing you what I've been watching lately, if you happen to be brand new here on my channel, you randomly stumbled upon me or through YouTube's recommendations and you're kind of digging what you're seeing so far, then consider hitting that red subscribe down below as well as that like button, but most importantly, that notification bell so you don't miss any videos like this in the future. And they can be entertaining because sometimes I throw movies. Okay, the majority of the time. Not all the time, but the majority of the time. So let's start off with what did I enjoy the best, the most? What won my heart this round? Jackie Brown, Quentin Tarantino's Jackie Brown. This one I loved. So much more entertaining to me than Pulp Fiction. Now don't get on me, don't get on me. Pulp Fiction to me, it's an overrated movie, just a little bit. I don't hate the movie by any means. I'm enjoying Pulp Fiction up to a point and then it just kind of takes a turn in, in a direction I'm not really fond of and I think you guys know what I'm talking about if you've seen the movie you kind of know what I mean that's not my favorite thing to watch in movies I gotta be honest so it kind of turns me off with that movie but with Jackie Brown I loved this film. You have great performances given by all of the actors, but that is no surprise when you have such a stacked all-star cast as this. Pam Greer, Samuel L. Jackson, Bridget Fonda, Robert De Niro, what's his name, Robert Forsyth, Michael Keaton is in this as well. Absolutely fantastic. This is probably Samuel L. Jackson's best performance in my in for me that I've seen. I loved him in this. It was great to see him right in the forefront of the movie. He was there the entire time, pretty much, leading this film, in and out bits and pieces, but he was there. He was the primary character in this movie, and I loved seeing that, because that's where Samuel L. Jackson needs to be, at the forefront of the movie. So if you haven't seen Jackie Brown, I highly recommend that you do. This was a great, good time. It doesn't feel like your regular Quentin, Tar Quentin Tarantino movie, I can't talk today, where it's not overly violent. There's a little bit of violence in there, but it's nothing like his past movies. So I think maybe that's probably the reason why I enjoyed it so much. I don't know. And then I actually have a tie for what I love the most. Funny Girl with Barbara Streisand. I can identify with this movie because if you have not seen Funny Girl, it's about Barbara and she wants to be up on stage and she wants those lead roles, but she's not the prettiest girl in the bunch, if you know what I mean. She's not your typical gorgeous girl with the perfect profile. She's not tall with the long legs. You know, her legs are skinny and she's, you know, got her nose going on. You know, that's what she says in the movie. I'm not just saying that. It's, you know, quoting from the movie. Um, so I can kind of relate just so, you know, I can relate to this because I don't consider myself a gorgeous beauty, you know, like I put myself in a certain category and I know where I am and that's where I fit in, but she becomes a success and that's what I want to do. I want to be a success here on YouTube. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, I would love to be, but like I can relate to this. So that's the reason why it was my other favorite is because it is so relatable great musical that obviously I've seen for the very first time. So I really enjoyed this and I think Jasmine sent this one over. So Jasmine, thank you so much for sending this to me and adding it into my musical collection. I absolutely loved it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's switch gears here a little bit and go to freaking weird. And that is Vampire's Kiss with Nicolas Cage. You know, I love Nicolas Cage. This is without question. I love Nick Cage. I don't love Nick Cage in this movie, but I love Nicolas Cage for the choices that he makes and where he goes sometimes is just so outlandishly ridiculous. And that is the definition of this film. Utterly ridiculous. It's about Nicolas Cage. He gets bitten by a you know vampirist played by what Jennifer Beals. She's not even really in the movie that much, to be honest. But 
You would think it's all about him transitioning into a vampire. He really doesn't do that. It's just kind of odd and strange. And it's about him being a jerk. He's just a jerk in this film to his assistant. Oh my gosh. He harasses her to no end in this film. This is just a weird and wacky, strange movie. I don't even know if I can rewatch this anytime soon. It's just one of the weirdest things and experiences that I've ever <laughs> that I've ever had with an actor. I'm sitting there and I'm watching the film like this and all the choices that Nicolas Cage is making, the way he talks, the way he walks, it's very much like an American Psycho vibe. And when I was looking up on IMDb about this movie, I guess there were influences between Vampire's Kiss and American Psycho, which I was right on about because I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, this is like Christian Bale and American Psycho. So when I looked it up on IMDb and I saw that, it made total sense. It's just weird. I cannot recommend this. Now, I love Nicolas Cage, but I can't recommend it. I would not you know, stand on a pedestal and say, you need to add this into your collection. I'm definitely not saying that. So save your, what, $17.99 that I paid for this and go spend it on something else. But I didn't hate the movie. It's just strange. It's an odd duck. <laughs> it's a very odd duck of a movie. Now we're drastically switching 180 to Sing 2. <laughs> Sing 2 I watched last night. It's cute. I watched the first Sing movie and I really enjoyed that one. And I am pleasantly happy to say that Sing 2 might be a little bit better than the first movie. And that hardly ever happens. And I mean, with animated titles, I don't really know. But it was a great follow up. It really was. And it was, it was just a joy and a pleasure to watch. And it was just fun. So if you enjoyed the first Sing movie, then definitely pick up Sing 2. I'm not going to go in depth about an animated title. They're just cute and adorable or they're horrible. There really isn't anything in between. All right, let's go go next to another musical. It is Oliver from my Columbia Classics Volume 2 collection. Oliver, Best Picture winner from 1968. So I had this preconceived notion that I really wasn't going to enjoy Oliver. And I kind of had to brace myself for it and this is why I watched it so late in the month all the movies I'm excited about watching I always watch early you know early on in the month because I really want to watch them but this one I saved for the last week of the month because I really wasn't digging it I was like okay let me watch Oliver popped it in I had my snacks and I'm sitting there and I'm watching it I enjoyed it I enjoyed this a lot more than I thought I was going to now, that doesn't mean it's my new favorite musical by any means. It's not my new favorite, but it was catchy. I enjoyed the songs. It kept my attention. I'm not going to rewatch this all the time, but I don't know. It doesn't have like, there's no Christmas elements in this movie, but for some reason, because it is, you know, old timey back in the day, like I would watch this during Christmas time for some reason. I don't know why it just like gives me that vibe. So yeah, like a once a year kind of watch, definitely. So I really enjoyed Oliver a lot more than I thought I was going to. It is a little bit long. It's about what, two and a half hours, but that's okay. The time went by fairly quickly and I enjoyed myself. So if you haven't seen Oliver, especially watch it on 4K because it was a nice transfer. Oliver, there we go. Oliver surprised me. All right, this movie wrecked me, and that is A Star is Born. You guys already know, you already know how I feel about A Star is Born. I mentioned this in my crying video. It's one of the movies that makes me cry every single time. And I was talking about the Lady Gaga version, because at that time, I had only seen the first and the fourth uh, interpretation of A Star is Born. So I wanted to watch Judy Garland's version, because I've heard amazing things about her performance. I think every version is just going to make me cry. This triggered me. I'm not even going to lie about it. This triggered me from past memories that I dealt with, with um, my situation that I dealt with, that I explained in that video. Uh, it was not good. It wasn't good, but it was worth watching because if you don't have, if you don't have, you know, prior a, a prior relationship like I have to this movie, then you should be fine. You won't be triggered by this. But this triggered me 
but that is okay. It was worth it because I saw a fantastic performance out of Judy Garland. How she did not win the Best Actress Oscar for this, I will never know. I will never, ever understand. Her performance is amazing. There's one scene in particular. She starts talking and everything that she's saying, I felt at one point in my life or I said in my head I was relating to it so much so much because of my prior experience that I had to deal with with my ex-husband and I just started crying I couldn't help myself I don't want to cry right now I'm holding back the tears but this film brought out all the emotions in me that I thought I had deeply buried and locked away and that was not the case because like I said it triggered me all the emotions came out again and whoo it was it was like therapy it was like a therapy session so I really enjoyed this it is a long movie it is almost three hours long it's probably the longest version but it is so good it is so good led by Judy Garland's performance man it is an emotional roller coaster let me tell you it is so amazing if you guys have not seen this interpretation of stars born then I really highly recommend that you pick it up but I can't watch that again anytime soon. Okay, <laughs> because too emotional. All right, let's get to West Side Story. The Steven, Steel, the Steven Spielberg version, the Steven Spielberg version. There we go. So the original West Side Story that I had watched, oh, I'd say about six months ago now, I wasn't the biggest fan. I gotta be honest. Um, and I had mentioned this prior it was very long and it was I thought it was so drawn out and I was bored I was bored during that musical and I said you know what I'm gonna keep myself optimistic for the new interpretation so going into this I already had an idea of what the play is about what the musical what we're dealing with I popped it in and I gotta say I did enjoy this version more than the original I'm not really sure why because pretty much it's honest, it's the same story I mean there really isn't any huge differences but I just like the modern look of it I guess and the modern spin twist just slightly of what they did it's beautiful to look at I will say the background the crumbling buildings the cinematography that they did in West Side Story is incredible Ariana DeBose who won for Best Supporting Actress she she earned it she earned it she was great I love the guy that played riff why he wasn't acknowledged for award season in any way blows my mind because he was actually I thought he was better than the guy that played Tony what's his name Ansel Egger or something like that I thought riff was way better um, he captured my attention anytime he was on screen I was more interested in his character than any other character so yes I did enjoy this version of West Side Story better than the original don't hate me don't shoot me it's just the way it is I'm sorry we're all not gonna agree that's okay that's all right <laughs> let's move on to another Judy Garland I am loving all the Judy's let me tell you all the Judy Garland movies I have just been loving so we have in the good old summertime this one was extremely cute it reminded me of that movie you've got mail with meg ryan and tom hanks because judy garland plays this woman that just happens to meet what's his name van johnson like randomly on the street and then she uh, she starts working in the shop where he works and they hate each other where actually they're pen pals and they are getting to know each other through the mail and they're falling in love so they're loving each other through the mail like in you've got mail with those emails and then in real life they hate each other so it's pretty much the same movie I just really enjoyed it different spin on it obviously this movie came first you've got mail came way later but I really enjoyed this one if you have not seen any of the old classic films I really recommend you guys start getting into them because they're just so cute and they're entertaining and they're not long watches they're about like a hundred minutes long and they're just they're great it's cinema people it's great cinema and that's what we should be watching instead of you know gremlins 14 okay <laughs> there's nothing wrong with gremlins 14 or whatever but sometimes you need those classics all right 
Victor Victoria. All these musicals for Music Month. For Music Month. But trust me, I've been enjoying watching all of these musicals. I know I'm flubbing up a little bit, but I've gone too far. I am not starting this video all over again. So Victor Victoria. Julie Andrews, what's his name, James Garner, and Robert Preston. I loved Robert Preston in this film. He was fantastic. He kind of plays like uh, Julie Andrews' sidekick. And it's all about Julie Andrews, who is this woman that she wants to perform, but no one hires her. So Robert Preston kind of finds her. They they uh, like get into cahoots with each other, and they, they form this plan where she's going to go on stage as a woman playing a guy that's disguised as a woman. It's like such an interesting concept and you're just wondering like are they going to get away with it? Are they going to find out? And then she falls in love with what's his name? James, I forget his name, James Garner's character and it, it's just fun. It's a fun movie all around. The ending is hilarious and I really enjoyed it. So Jasmine, thank you very much for sending this one over as well. We're getting a little bit more modern now. We got Jawbreaker. <laughs> Jawbreaker. I go from a musical, a classic musical, to Jawbreaker. This is how I've been watching things lately. Just so, so weird. Complete 180 from each other. So Jawbreaker is about a group of girls who accidentally killed their fourth friend in the friend group. And they're trying to hide it. They're trying to get away with it. Rose McGowan is the head of the group. This is Heathers, okay? Like, this is the movie Heathers with a different twist, a different spin on it, because you have, like, the group of girls that are the most popular at the high school. They're bitches. They're just bitchy and they're catty. They, they're not really friends. They all hate each other. It's one of those kind of movies. It's definitely a cult classic film. I mean, I enjoyed it for what it was. I think, like, the ending, though kind of left something to be desired. It kind of just wrapped up way too quickly for me. I would have liked to have seen maybe one or two additional scenes not end it at the dance. I don't know. It just it just seemed like they were like, okay, we're running out of ideas. Let's just blah, blah, blah. Okay, and it's done. I don't know. Just a little bit too quick for me. I like the entire concept of, whoops, we accidentally killed our best friend. What are we going to do? You know, I like that. But after that and that whole sequence and trying to get away with it, the ending just went way too quickly for me. That's my only complaint about Jawbreaker, but gotta have in the collection. It is a cult classic. Let's make love with Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> okay, this one. I enjoyed this one. I really enjoyed this one because with this film, I could see Marilyn's acting skills because in prior movies with Marilyn that I have seen she's always played the dumb blonde it seems like back then if you needed the dumb blonde you had Marilyn Monroe on speed dial and you just called up her agent and said send her over you know that's how it was but in this movie she actually showed her acting skills and I was really interested in how she was portraying her character and honestly this movie dragged just a little bit for me, but because her performance was so engrossing for me, I got through it. But honestly, it's not the title that I would gravitate towards the most and pull off the shelf if I wanted to watch a Marilyn Monroe movie. Some like it hot. I would pull that off or Gentlemen Prefer Blondes because those two movies to me are fantastic. This one lagged just a little bit, but Marilyn's performance for me saves this film. So, I mean, I enjoyed it and everything, but it is kind of, it felt like it was two and a half hours long, and I don't even think it's two hours. It just felt way, it was dragging way, way too long, but Marilyn saves it for me. Okay. Ah, oh, another Judy. I love this one. Meet Me in St. Louis. I adored this movie, and I think, I think the reason is because it was giving me kind of like little women vibes, just a smidge. So in this film, we're following this family for an entire year's time in the movie. And Judy Garland plays one of the daughters. There's four daughters, so that's where like the little women vibe comes in. It's kind of around like, it's not the same time. It's like, what, 1903 or something? So maybe around the same time period as Little Women, just a smidge, like in the, the decade or something. So that's where like the similarities come in for me and it she just plays an amazing character she's boy crazy she's in love with the boy next door she's trying anything and everything to get his attention and it's just a cute movie again the classics 
are cute films and I really enjoyed this one. I really want to watch this one probably during the Christmas time every single year. For some reason it just gives that vibe. I'm not really sure why but it does. I enjoyed the heck out of this film and I highly recommend that you guys watch this if you have not seen it already. All right. We have come to that moment in the video where I show you the worst. The one I did not really like or appreciate and I'm sure it's going to shock you and I'm sure some people are going to have something to say about this but I don't care because it's Tommy. I hated this. What is this? What was this? I did not finish this. I stopped this after about 20 to 25 minutes. I could not take it anymore. This musical makes absolutely no sense. I, this was by who? The Who, right? The, the band The Who did this movie. I don't know what they were smoking. I don't know what kind of paraphernalia they were doing while they were writing this and putting this together. But no sober person would ever put this together and say this is a fantastic musical. I am sorry. This was the most dumb thing I've ever seen in my entire life. The musical sequences did not make sense to me. It was just a bunch of noise. I tried. I tried to watch this thing as long as I could. Trust me. I wanted to turn it off after like five or ten minutes, but I said no. Maybe it's going to get better. I held out hope for a really long time that it was going to improve. And after about 20 to 25 minutes, I said no. I cannot take this anymore. And I just shut it off. I didn't even get to the part where, where Elton John came in where it's like the Tommy song, the pinball wizard. Like I didn't get there and I just, I couldn't do it. I saw Tina Turner and that was it. And I was like, you know what? I'm out. Like I cannot do this. So I hated Tommy. I'm sorry. If you guys love this musical, do not shoot me and do not hate me. Do not leave hateful comments down below. Try to keep it to a minimum. Okay. But you know what happens to movies that I do not like? And it's a steel book, so I'm not going to throw it. I'm just going to toss it. That's what happens. So that is everything that I have been watching lately. Let me know down below what have you been watching lately. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave. And I'll see you next time.